in order to make your diet a brain healthy diet, you need to do three things. So what we just talked about, you and I just talked about was the protect piece. You want to protect your brain from inflammation and oxidative stress. But there are two other things you also need to do. So if you follow whole foods principles and you don't eat any junk, you don't read, you don't eat refined carbohydrates, you don't eat sugars or cereals or products made with flour, and you don't eat any vegetable oil and you stick just to whole foods, that is one, that is a very important principle to follow. And that will protect you to a large extent against the most common causes of inflammation and oxidative stress that come from the diet. But there are two other things you also have to do. One is you have to nourish the brain. And that means you have to eat foods that are capable of delivering all of the essential nutrients that you need to the brain cells. And if you are eating no animal foods at all, then you will not be capable of delivering the, to the brain all of the essential nutrients it needs. The only way you can try to remedy the serious nutritional holes that are in even, a, even the healthiest sort of whole foods uh, vegan diet even the healthiest version of that, which would be based primarily on whole foods, would be by including a significant amount of fortified processed foods, because you can't fortify a whole food, and uh, lots of supplements, uh, which not everybody can access or afford in the world, and which also are not I the ideal way for us to obtain our nutrients. We process, we absorb and process uh, and regulate nutrients differently when we when we extract them from whole foods versus when we take them in the concentrated form of a supplement. So there are some some challenges uh, to uh, to eating a brain healthy diet if, if you're not including any animal foods at all. Um, but I do like to say that I am nutritionally pro choice, meaning I want to help everybody regardless of their dietary preferences have access to better brain health, improve their brain health. Now, ideally. When I follow the biology and the logic of nutrition, what I arrive at is a food that that is uh, the, where the core is animal foods, but you can still, there's a lot you can do if you prefer not to eat animals. There's still some important things you can do that will improve the brain healthiness of your diet, if you will, um, if you have the right information. And then the third piece of the, 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 the third piece, the third pillar of a brain healthy diet, so we've got nourish we have protect is also energize. And, and this is the other piece of the puzzle that people, regardless of plant, whether they're eating plants, animals, or both can pay attention to, which is your glucose and insulin levels. Because if your glucose and insulin levels are not kept in a healthy range, your brain energy supply will be compromised over time. And you will gradually lose some of your ability to, to, uh, to turn glucose, use carbohydrate for energy. And so if you're eating a so-called plant-based diet, if you're eating a vegan uh, diet, for example, even if it's a whole foods diet, if there's too much carbohydrate in it for your personal metabolism, your glucose and insulin levels will run too high and that will be uh, problematic for you. So regardless of uh, you know whether you're eating all plants or a mixture of plants and animals, you still need to pay attention to those glucose and insulin levels because simply eating whole foods plant based or even or even whole foods paleo diet uh, may not go far enough to normalize and stabilize your glucose and insulin levels. The absolute best way, if you if you can afford it, uh, is with a continuous glucose monitor. Um, actually, even wearing one right now. So here in the United States, uh, just until last week we used to require prescription to uh, obtain a, a continuous glucose monitor. People needed to get a prescription uh, from a prescriber to uh, access continuous glucose monitors. And even with a prescription, they can be expensive because they're only covered by insurance under certain circumstances, such as insulin dependent diabetes. But, uh, but now here in the United States anyway, we now have access to uh, at least one brand of a continuous glucose monitor without a prescription. And so the things are changing really rapidly on that front. But, and, and then in many other countries, they've been available without a prescription for a long time. So most European countries and Canada, they've been available without a prescription for a long time. But yes, ideally, if you can afford one, um, the, uh, using a continuous glucose monitor, which is simply a painless patch that attaches to the skin and lasts for about two weeks 
and it's measuring your glucose pretty much uh, around the clock for about two weeks in a row, that will give you really valuable personalized information about how your food choices and other aspects of your lifestyle, like exercise and sleep and stress and alcohol affect your personal metabolism. And anything that's raising your glucose too high uh, should be avoided if you want to really protect protect your brain and, and, and body health.